Hey guys, and today we're going to do a DIY home server for only £5. We're going to use an old laptop and we're going to uncase it and mount it properly. Um, so here's the spec for the laptop we're using. It's a Dell Inspiron 1750 laptop. It was trashed. Um, that's a spec. Here's a picture of one. And uh, we're just going to jump right in it. Right, so we have ourselves some uh, sumo board here. And um, I'm going to get asked the question, why is there a bit of paper on it? Well, this piece of paper is big enough that the board will fit on the piece of sumo board. So if I cut the piece of sumo board to the size of the piece of paper, I know the board's going to fit. So where exactly did I get this? I got this from a company who does fascias. Um, it was really cheap. It was an off-cut, and apparently they don't sell it very often. So um, I got it nice and cheap. Uh, this whole piece cost me about four pound. I think it was four fifty, and um, it's it's a decent length. So I'm now going to cut these up, and after that, we're going to go measure them up again. So as you can now see, we've got our two feet on the left and our two panels that we will mount our laptop motherboards to. Now, one's, why is one smaller than the other? Because they have one laptop motherboard which is considerably smaller than the other. Um, so, I didn't really want something massive with only something little on. So, we've cut it smaller. And I'll probably cut the foot for it slightly smaller as well. It depends on exactly how it fits on there and whether it's stable enough or not. So, let's move on to the next bit. Right, so I'm back in my office and um, I've put the bit of sumo board, or I think it's just plastic, you could just call it plastic, um, down and I, if you look through one of the holes, you can see that there is actually a black mark underneath all of them. What I've done is I've gone through with this small, um, really small, like watch fixing screwdriver and just stuck it through each one of the holes and push down until it makes a dent in the plastic enough that I can put a permanent marker mark on it. Now this motherboard oddly is in two pieces as you can see it slots together on two heights so I'm gonna have to put offset or these razor screws in a lot of the places and then two of them in some more of the holes just to ensure that this has enough clearance from the plastic to make it not fire hazard. Um, this one nicely comes with a USB lead, so um, that will probably. I, I don't know whether to cut this down or not yet. Not yet. Um, I might cut this end off because uh, it's just too long. Um, but the power switch it nicely fits at the top. So I'll put that and I'll put the plastic cover that came with it back over it and glue it down. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We've got, still got to glue the foot on the bottom, but I've still got to go along and get all these little, I don't know if you can see that, they're like pieces of plastic that were from where I cut it with a saw. So after that, we are pretty much ready to boot it. As you can see we have the hole for the SATA drive um, so the SATA will need to be put on pins as well but I have got a bag of them and I have already put pins on the other motherboard uh, the smaller one so uh, we'll see how it goes. So as you can see we now have it mounted on its screws and it has a good clearance rate. This will be good for when we turn it on because it will want the ability to have air around it. I know as it is was a laptop um, it would not have really needed that much clearance. The case I took it out of it had nearly no clearance all the way around but um, for thermal dynamic purposes we, we've given it a good clearance. Uh, I've screwed it in with some of these mounting screws. I got them at the computer shop so I guess they're they might be might be hard drive screws. Um, but they do fit the mounting brackets I've used. So now we're going to go on to the base. 
and I'm going to screw and glue the base on. Um, I was just going to glue it with super glue, uh, which is how I got these um, risers to stay in there. Um, but I'm now thinking I'm going to screw it as well because this is not thin um, plastic. This is fairly thick. You know, it's half the width of my finger, so it will take one of these small black plasterboard screws which are self-boring um, in and leave a decent amount of space so that it doesn't come out the front or out the back so once we've got that together I shall start again so we've now finished it and as you can see I left the end of the board and I've now glued the foot on and screwed it um, I've left the end of this board right here for a CD drive. This laptop was pretty well destroyed when I got it and it came with its CD drive still so it should slot in here like that which will cover the rest of the board up. So I'm debating whether to stick, stick it on there um, as you can see, I have a USB. I have the USB now up there, and I have the power switch mounted so that you can turn it on and off. Um, but it, yeah, I'm I'm quite happy. Here's the hard drive that came with it. Um, that'll obviously slot in here where it used to, and that is our five pound home server done. Um. Obviously, the RAM is on the underside of the board, but it's screwed on. So, at the end of the day, if I need to get to the RAM, I'll just unmount the screws. And, uh, yeah, just unmount the screws and go for it. Uh, but the base is now glued down nicely. It's now flush with the rest. Um, I'm not going to bother sanding the cut edge, um, as it's going to sit on a shelf. Um, it's designed to be out of the way. Um, as you can see, the mounts are at one, the ports are at one end, and I have the power switch at the other. I intend to sit it this way, with the vent upwards. Uh, hopefully, the heat will rise out of it slightly better. I did test both of these machines before dismantling them. Um, although one of them had no screen, no keyboard, no mouse track. Yeah, it was pretty much just just the motherboard, the CD drive, and a part of a part of a wireless card. The screen had been completely ripped off the off the laptop, so God knows what the hell they'd done with that. But yeah, so it's pretty well finished. Um, unfortunately, I can't plug it in yet because my new switch to hook this up to my ever-growing network hasn't arrived yet. But for what it is, um, it's a 4 gig quad core laptop pretty much that is now going to have a new life with no screen as a server. And it's considerably better ventilated than it once was inside of its laptop case. So I can't see it being an issue. But for £5 for the both of them, I can't argue. I really can't. If these last like six months, I can use them as a file server for six months. It's still worth it. Um, Dropbox is extortionate. I think it's like £12 a month for unlimited Dropbox, where I can just stick a hard drive in this, um, hook it up to the network, plug it into the new switch where it comes later today, and I've got myself a file server, a web server. Um, you know, a cloud, install my cloud on it, and, you know, we're away. So, for what it is, it's done really well. And I, I've i had, this is not the first time I've done the, one of these, um, I will put a picture on the screen in a minute, of uh, a server I made a few years ago out of an old notebook. And uh, it ran really well for four years four years it it ran well 
the the lady who sold me the notebook said that her son or something had dropped it down the stairs um, and all that was wrong with it was the screen was broken however these are laptop motherboards there is a considerable difference between the laptop motherboard and the notebook motherboard namely that I I had problems with the notebook not having a screen attached and the it not booting with a, with no screen attached so I ended up sticking it in a Tupperware tub full of mineral oil with the screen in there and you can see that from the picture that uh, I've put on the screen right now it was literally a Lego box with um, it was a box with Legos in it to hold the hold the motherboard off the bottom and it lasted for years so, so I'd like to see what you said in the comment section do you think it's a good idea? Do you not think it's a good idea? I know it's a cheap idea. And um, post any pin links if you make your own. I'd like, I'd like to see them. And if you have any other, or, uh, other ideas for things that you'd like to see which are cheap. I don't, you know, I don't have a lot of money. YouTube doesn't pay well. So uh, if you have any other ideas which are cheap, um, I might have the parts to do it. And be glad to, to uh, give it a try. So until next time. So we've got it on and we've got it to post and XP is still installed on the hard drive that came with it. So it works fine. So these, uh, this is how it ended up. Uh, it now sits on my filing shelf kind of thing. Uh, just running my cloud. Um, however, with the amount of RAM and the fact that it has an onboard integrated graphics card you could do very slow video rendering with it or perhaps some other things maybe run some virtual machines on it but um, I'll leave that up to you uh, so that's the end of this tutorial and uh, here's some videos that you might like or that you haven't seen and if you enjoyed it hit that hit that like button and um, think about subscribing so till next time